You can go from a photo this wide all the way to seeing the beauty in the plant's design at 15 times zoom or even at 30 times zoom. This right here is the Oppo Reno 7, Oppo's latest premium mid-range device. I have had this device for a few days and I have to say that so far it has not disappointed me. The Oppo Reno 7 has a lot of impressive features and it is heavily advertised as the portrait king. Like it has a very good portrait camera but like every other smartphone it also carries a couple of drawbacks in this video i will share my thoughts on this device and everything i have observed within the time i've had it if you're new to the channel welcome and if you are a returning viewer welcome back be sure to hit that like button so more people can benefit from this review video all right without further ado let's get to the video Now for the unboxing of this device, I had a rather interesting unboxing experience and I already posted it on the channel which you can watch uh, with the card up above or with the link in the description below. And if you love ASMR, I'll have that link in the description below as well. I have to say that I was very impressed with what Oppo had done with the design of the Reno 7. Uh, I got mine in cosmic black, in the cosmic black color and it just looks simple and pretty amazing at the same time. The way this device feels gets top marks for me. Every time I picked it up and I held it in my hands, it did feel very premium. And as a side note, if you get the sunset orange color, which I love, by the way, you get the, you get the first of its kind leather back with fiberglass frame. And I held it and it looked and felt really dope. Considering the design aesthetic that goes into other more expensive flagship devices, I'd say that this one deserves a seat at the high table, whatever the high table is, with this level of build quality and design quality. You can be rest assured that you are getting good value for money in terms of how your phone looks and feels. And it does not end there. The size and weight of this device is yet another part of its design that really got me surprised. These days, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find major flagships that don't weigh more than your hands can carry for long and are not too big to fit in your pockets. With the Oppo Reno 7, Oppo made sure that you do not have to worry about feeling uncomfortable while carrying your phone. Even when you add the phone case that comes in the box, you know, while it adds a bit more chunk to the device, it does not feel like a burden. Standing at a height of about 6.3 inches with a width of about 2.88 inches and thickness of 0.75 inches, I think that uh, overall it's quite the perfect sized device. Around the device is everything you would expect. The power button is on the right side, the volume rockers and SIM tray are on the left side of the device. It can take two nano SIMs and an expandable storage. Speaker grills are on the bottom, USB Type-C charging port, a 3.5mm headphone port, and a microphone at the bottom and another microphone at the top. Generally, this is a great design and I sort of expected the matte finish on the back of the device to be uh, an absolute fingerprint magnet, but that did not happen on here. Now, enough on the appearance of the device, let's see what it packs on the inside. The display of the Oppo Reno 7 is a 6.43 inch AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080p by 2400, a refresh rate of 90Hz and an approximately 409 pixel per inch density display. On paper, Oppo claims that this device can get as high as 600 nits of peak brightness, which is pretty impressive. In reality though, I was not able to measure how many nits of brightness this device puts out. However, I did not have any issues using this device outdoors on a sunny day. It was bright enough to use indirect sunlight without having to strain my eyes. Now, streaming high quality content on YouTube and Netflix on this device was a very good experience overall and uh, the colors were popping as always and they were sharp. While it is unable to stream 4K, at 1080p I really liked what I got from the display of the Renault 7. I also liked that it did not have any intrusive bezels. While it is not an edge-to-edge -edge screen, it does have a screen to body ratio of approximately 90.8%. Having these relatively slim bezels makes the viewing and usage experience a bit more enjoyable with this guy. Even with gaming, all the colors and graphics from the games that I played with this device came out just fine. Even at medium graphics level, Call of Duty still looked good. 
I did wish it came with 120 hertz, you know, to the screen. It is pretty much a birthright for premium devices at this point. However, at 90 hertz on here, the screen did not feel. It felt very smooth with motion and touch when I was scrolling across different parts of the screen. It also did not affect my gaming experience at any point. Once you have a good internet connection, you should be just fine with the 90 hertz display that you get on here when you're playing high refresh games. The final thing I think uh, ties this display together is that it's Corning Gorilla Glass 5. While it's not the toughest screen on the market, this screen is set to withstand drops from as high as 1.2 meters. This for me is a huge advantage because it would be a total waste to have all of these impressive features you know, with the display and then lose your screen with a slight drop. The Oppo Reno 7 is powered by a Snapdragon 680 chipset and the unit that was sent to us came with both Oppo's latest ColorOS 12.1 and Google's latest Android 12. It also has an octa-core CPU with a maximum clock rate of 2.4 GHz and an Adreno 610 GPU. As for RAM and storage, you get 8 gigs of RAM that you can extend and storage of 256 GB. The Snapdragon 680 chip is pretty reputable it's a pretty reputable chipset in terms of processing power that it offers to its users and it does not fail on the oppo reno 7 here i tested the oppo reno 7 while playing games like call of duty afterlife and asphalt 9 and i tried to play games you know i tried to play games that would test both the graphics speed and refresh rate of this device thankfully i did not experience any lag as i ran all of these games the device also does a decent job with multitasking. You can split screen, you can even add an extra screen and everything will run just fine. With 8 gigs of RAM, the performance of this device it did not really come as a surprise. It also has the expandable RAM feature that has been you know, pretty much all over the place with recent smartphone releases. 8 gigs of RAM might be quite sufficient for the average smartphone user and having the option to expand your RAM and get more out of your storage while you can is a feature that I think is commendable. You can extend by 2 gigabytes, 3 gigabytes or 5 gigabytes to get as much as 13 gigabytes of RAM. Keep in mind that you have to restart your phone once you select your preferred size of RAM. The Reno 7 comes with a game mode that lets you select exactly how you want the device to run while you are gaming. The preset mode allows you to select what level of power consumption you would like uh, the device to adjust and optimize to. One thing I'd like to point out here is that these days devices are more than just specs. Without proper optimization of these set specs and numbers that we throw around, you may not really enjoy a device. A feature like game mode is a great way to cover up the possibility of having performance lags while optimizing the performance of the device for the said activity which is running at the time aka the game that you are running also if you are one of those people that 256 gigabytes of storage is somehow not large enough then the Reno 7 will be great for you since it supports adding an external micro sd card storage with the slot there now let's get to the battery life as for battery you get a 4500 milliamp hour battery on the oppo reno 7. now 4500 milliamp hours is definitely not the biggest battery on the market i know many people would have loved to see a battery capacity of at least 4700 milliamp hours or 5000 milliamp hours but then devices are more than just numbers again just like i mentioned in the time that i have used this device the battery of the device held up really well. Despite using it with mobile data and internet hotspot turned on for hours and then throwing in several hours of gaming and streaming, the battery of the Renault 7 lasted an entire day until the morning of the next day before it eventually died. As for charging, the Renault 7 does a pretty impressive job. The Oppo Renault 7 is designed to handle 33 watt fast charging and thankfully it comes with Oppo's 33 watt SuperVOOC charger in the box. In the first 10 minutes of charging after the device shut down, it went from 0 to 20%. After about 30 minutes, the device had already gotten over half at 55%. By the one hour mark, the device was already at 96%. It took about four minutes to eventually get to 100%. With the battery performance that this device offered me, if you plug it in the morning while you prepare for your day, the charge that you get from an hour of charging is definitely going to be enough to get you throughout your day without having to plug it in again. So one hour gives you 24 hours, sort of. As always, I would have to remind you that my tests are not 
scientific or completely 100% accurate if you buy this phone and uh, it cannot really be set in stone since this battery performance will change across varying users depending on your own uh, power supply and the frequency of which you use your device and length of usage the battery's health eventually on security the oppo reno 7 comes with the regular features that you would expect you get the standard password pattern or pin uh, and in display fingerprint scanner and of course face id i found the face unlock fascinating with how snappy it was to set up and how well it works the response time was almost instant and it never missed at any point throughout my usage the same thing applied with the in-display fingerprint scanner. The in-display fingerprint scanner is still a tricky business for even some high-end devices, but at this level, the Reno7 does really well with its in-display fingerprint scanner. It takes about a second or just over a second to read your fingerprints and unlock the device. And I was very impressed with the execution of this feature. And I also like how you can choose which animation you want for the fingerprint reader. You can select from a wide variety of animations when you want to unlock your device. The Reno7 comes with a 32 megapixel front facing camera and no added flash, but it does come with a few flash from the front camera. The rear cameras of the Reno7 are as follows. A 64 megapixel main or wide angle camera with that Sony IMX709 sensor, a 2 megapixel microscope camera and a 2 megapixel mono camera that has got an IR lens and it will help for um, portrait shots. But how does it really work in real life though? As I always do, I'll start with selfies. It is a sharp and decent looking image that you can pull out of the Reno7 and comparing it to the portrait mode, you get a sense of where Oppo is headed with this device. You know, like I said, they think this is a good device for portraits and I got some decent shots out of it. One thing I recommend to get the best photos out of the phone is to tap and pull down slightly until you're satisfied with how it looks, both on the front and the back cameras. Okay, moving on. The wide angle camera on here is really wide. I like how it represented the skies and the landscape looked sharp. You can go to 2x zoom, 5x zoom, all the way to 10x zoom, and you will still find text being legible enough, which is very crucial to quality. I like how it processed colors and eventual details of the photos, especially when you move closer. It does retain a large amount of sharpness and detail, especially with the 64 megapixel lens. I pointed the camera up within the building, and while I liked how the shot turned out, I felt the exposure could have looked better. Just like I mentioned, we can always dial it down to get exactly what we want, but many people might just whip out their phones and tap to take a picture, not minding that, but please, you know, try to like adjust the exposure. I respect the range that the Oppo Reno7 has with the camera all the way from the wide to the zoom and, you know, albeit digital. Now, I say this, but there's the 64 megapixel mode, which kind of adds a new perspective. It's in the size of the photo, how big the pixels are, and also the amount of detail and sharpness that it can retain. To turn it on, of course, you toggle the 64 megapixel mode at the top of the camera setting. First off, the regular shot sat at just over 5 megabytes, while the 64 megapixel shot sat at 20 megabytes. That's something, a four times difference in quality almost. Well, looking at the normal image on the phone, the zoom just maxes in and maxes out like uh, normal for the normal shot. While for the 64 megapixel shot, things start to look very detailed and clear. You can see the thread in the jeans. You can see as much detail as possible compared to the normal shot. Speaking of detail and clarity, when pointed at a human subject, I noticed three things in three different and common moods. Since it's indoors, the light would need some compensation from the processing power from the processing of the photo if it's not adequate. HDR shot processed both the foreground and the background and gives you this halo effect on the subject, but not every time. And portrait mode shines quite well and does fairly well with the background blur, all of which would depend on how you yourself frame the photos to take the shots and the condition of the lighting in the environment. Going to night photography, once again, you can put the normal shot and the night shot side by side and it does what a night shot would do. It would make the photo a tad bit brighter even as it introduces some green or noise to the photo. For human subjects, there is a similar situation and in addition, I noticed that the normal uh, the normal shot looks blurry in comparison to the night mode shot, which is 
sharper and brighter. Now, speaking of sharpness, let's get into the world of the microscope lens. This is part of the many reasons why the lens's ring light on the back comes on. You know, it comes on when you charge it, of course, but this microscope triggers it. Even the focus distance is very microscopic. Objects need to be very, very, very close to the camera lens before you can capture it. You can go from a photo this wide all the way to seeing the beauty in the plant's design at 15 times zoom or even at 30 times zoom. You can do this for many other things, but let me know what you would love to use a microscopic camera to take. Just leave a comment below with, you know, if you had a microscopic camera like this, what photos would you take? While people might give it some flack for being two megapixels, I think Oppo did this because it's not a feature for everyone to use. It is still somewhat of a specialty or novelty, if you will. Now, when it comes to videos, you still get some level of detail alongside overexposure. But overall, it looked pretty standard, although limited to 1080p again. I also liked the slow motion video. It felt smooth, that's just all I'll say. There are also more camera modes that you can explore like panorama, text scanning, extra HD and more. You know, those are extra features. Overall, the Reno 7 checked all or most of the boxes uh, at a decent level. While it's not the wildest device, it comes with just enough features to cater to your needs without having to spend huge sums of money on a higher end device. There are a lot of thoughtful additions to this device that makes it a good value for money. I also like that it comes with some little perks like the floating window, split screen, a smart sidebar, and more features like, like this, you know, that make the device a bit more interesting to use. One thing I think is the most thoughtful feature of everything I found on this device is the fact that the keyboard comes with a Naira sign. I see you, Oppo. I see, I see what you did there. Well, guys, that's all from me. Let me know what your thoughts are about this device in the comment section down below. Will you be joining to order this device? Uh, for those that left comments about enjoying their older Oppo devices, uh, would you consider upgrading uh, to the Reno 7? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit that like button so more people can benefit from this review, from the information that we've shared here. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon right beside it so you'll be the first to know when i post any video just turn on notifications thank you so much for watching this video again and i'll see you guys in the very next one